This literally redefines how noise is used for AI. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I'm gonna show you something that is nothing short of revolutionary. This is an idea by Akatsuzi. There is a workflow you can download. It's more complex than mine. You can also download my workflow I'm showing in this video to experiment with this method. Now, I'm gonna show you two things here that you can do specifically with ComfyUI because it allows you to inject noise. I will do it in two different positions. One is in the latent noise. That's the base on which the image is generated. And then we're also gonna do it in the depth map. All right, so let's have a look on what is happening here. Now, we have two sections here that are pretty interesting. This again gives you a very good indicator of why ComfyUI is such a powerful tool. So here we are loading an image. Now here we are scaling the image to 512 by 768, no matter what the input is. So this is going to be cropped a little bit. And then we are also adding some padding here to the side with some feathering, which means it's a soft border. And then there is another upscale to make it into the right dimensions and then this is blend together to this image here. You can see this has the right dimension that we want to have for our rendering but it also has a white border around that. We're going to use that for the artistic style. Now up here we have the classic loading of the checkpoint. We have a clip skip here. We have a VAE loader here and our negative and positive prompt. Pretty classic stuff. And then up here, look at that, how beautiful this is. We have another load image. This is going into control net. This is why these are just gray values in here. Then again, we are scaling this to have the right ratio, 512 by 768. And then of course we apply the control net to our conditioning. Conditioning is the text prompt so that the control net is part of the image. Here's a preview on how that output looks for our control net input basically just so you can see how that looks now this is then going over here into a case sampler which is rendering and then it's decoding it into an actual pixel image from the latent space now i did include some extra steps here so here we have a upscale so this is getting 1.5 times the size and then we have another case sampler rendering it for higher quality and then over here, I'm sending this into Face Detailer, which is basically like the ComfyUI version of a detailer to just give me a nicer version of the face, more beautiful version of the face. Now, as you can see here, I've turned off the upscaling. I've turned off the second case sampler because we only need a low resolution version for me to show you what is going on here. I'm also going to drag these elements over here, this kind of input here and this kind of input here. So remember the colorful part is the input that is injected in the noise and then over here this is used for the depth map now again also it's important to point out here for the first case sampler i'm having a denoise of 0.75 so this is taking a little bit of the image also into consideration this is why the color here works onto the image we are using it's kind of like a little bit of image to image rendering let's experiment with this and see where we get with this so i'm going to show you something that's more obvious so here i have painted different kinds of noise you can do whatever you want you can create any kind of structure any kind of input let me make this a little bit bigger so you see what's actually going on here. This I've done with Affinity Photo, which is a program that can do this very easily. I want to show you something here. It's pretty cool. So I have here, you can see this noise that has a blue outer part. And then we have this pink inner part. And then when we're going to render this over here, you can see this is now cropped and has this white border and it's rendering over here. And it's of course also using my depth map over here. And this is my output. Now see how interesting that is. So 
First of all, we have this kind of artistic border here, which is very nice. It's a combination of the white border that we have from the noise, because if there is a white, there's no noise at all, but also from this structure here that we have from our depth map that is making this interesting brush paint watercolor border here around that. Really, really cool. But you can also see that our character has red clothing and there is a blue surrounding around that. Now, look what happens if I take this noise here that is yellow in the middle instead. So we're going to render the image again. And as you can see, after a short moment of waiting, now our character has a blue and red outfit and the surrounding is still blue. So we have an influence here on the design of the image, but also on the posing of the image. You can do some very dramatic, interesting stuff. Let me show you something else. So here I'm going to use a noise. This one, multicolored noise, also has this kind of bend in the middle. So let's try this out over here. Let's see what this is rendering. So here we have a new result. And you can see how this is much more colorful, but also look at the nice dynamic pose we are getting from that. That is stunning. It's really interesting. It's not using open pose or anything. This is bringing stable diffusion to dynamic, interesting poses based on the noise that we are injecting, based on a depth map that we have painted by hand. That is just amazing. Okay, let's try different depth map over here. So I've prepared different styles. As you can see here, you can really experiment with that. And over time, you get a feeling for what it's doing and you can actually have more control over that. So for example, what does happen if we have a dark blob in the middle and then some patterns around that? Let's load that in here. You can see now it's sitting over here. We have the same input. We have the same seed. Everything is the same. So here you can see the changed output. Everything is the same but the depth map and suddenly we have this pose where she's bending her hip to the right side standing and it's kind of like a little bit unnatural s curve but it is a very dynamic very interesting pose nonetheless you can also see from the blob we have in our depth map that we also have the background here rendered and then a lot more of this white part and then these big brush strokes around the characters how beautiful is that let's try out a different pattern so this time i want to use this kind of triangle or wedge here and you can see again we're getting a different result from that where she's a little bit floating in the space we have these big brush strokes in the background the legs are a little bit cut off in that space because of course we are having here in the depth map just darkness a very dark gray in there so it's not much to go on for the ai but again we have a very interesting dynamic composition here now this bending of the character is also based on the bending we have over here in our input so we have control over what we are generating because let's try another noise that we inject into our latent image. So in this case, for example, let's try here this blue and green noise. And here we have the new result again. Look at this very interesting pose. Now we have a lot more blue in there. We have a lot more green in there. We have a very dynamic pose with the angle coming up from down looking upwards at her so this kind of dynamic this kind of artistic expression also the playfulness of the background i have not seen with stable diffusion out of the box so this is really interesting and by painting that by creating these kind of noise injections yourself you have so much control over that. This has so much potential for experimentation. Now, I also want to show you a little bit on how I do this inside of Affinity Photo. That is the name of the software. This is a software that is easier than Photoshop. You buy it only once. You often get a lot of free updates for that. And here you can just pixel paint on that. So you can see here I have painted this structure that kind of looks a little bit strange down here on the right side you can see we have layer effects we also have live filters so when we click on the live filters, you can see there's a long list for that and one of them is called half tone effect so what i can do with the half tone effect is the sliders here you can see i can dynamically 
adjust the kind of noise I want to have here. I can adjust the contrast I want to have here. I can do a lot of different other things to play around the color or it might be lines or any kind of other thing. So there's a huge potential to create all kinds of different noise just with this halftone tool. Now, for example, what I can also do here is I can do a recolor adjustment. So when I click on that, I have these sliders here. Now you can see that this is black and white. So for recoloring that case, what we need to do is to push up the brightness. You can see this then turns it into color. We can have more saturation in here. And then you, for example, can move around this kind of slider here. But of course, we can also go into the halftone and set this back to color so that this is more in a color tone and then we go back to the recolor you can actually go back here now we have to reduce the lightness to get more color and then again we can readjust this in any kind of color just with the slider so that's pretty beautiful but you can also of course blend over that do any kind of other thing so for example here i have a hue blend mode for that then i have an hsl shift adjustment i turn that on you can see this again can switch the complete color here, give it more or less saturation. This is what I'm doing here. So there's a lot of potential for that. And then of course you can do other things like just for example, I paint on that structure that I've created. So I make a new pixel layer. I blend it with multiply. I just paint on that with different colors. Like let's for example say, I wanna use orange here. So just go in here and I can paint some orange in here and I can say, what do I want here? Let's say I want some pink in here like this. So I can create all kinds of crazy patterns, all kinds of different interesting noises and color combinations. And of course, you can also put images on that or all kinds of other things that you find online that create yourself. And then you can experiment with that. You can upload that into ConfUI. And of course, what you can also do is use the filters because this is a photo editor. So a very interesting thing you can do here is to go to filters, distort, and then mirror. And with that, for example, I can set the amount, the number of mirrors. Now, this is not going to show us much right now because this is round. But when I click and then move it around, oh, look at that. There's some pretty cool stuff happening here all of a sudden and just like that you can create all kinds of really crazy patterns in here and things that you then can use as an input so i would say with all of this akatsuzu really has opened up a new dimension of how to work and play with ai image generation you can download all of this right now with the link below the video let me know in the comments what you think about that thanks for watching and see you soon bye Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.